Welcome everybody to this commentary track. Uh, this is Greg Williams, the writer and director of Repossession. And just wanted to provide you a little bit of insight into the process of this film, some of the choices I made, and give a little bit of overall understanding about the film. So uh, this is Troy Bayham Jr. who plays our untitled lead. And I wanted to go for sort of a silent film aesthetic, but keep it somewhat modern and a little bit mystic. So I had him communicate completely through text message with some sort of undefined communicator on the other end. We don't know if it's a boss, if it's a colleague, a friend, a confidant. You know, everything's really open-ended going into this. But uh, I wanted to dress him in all black to kind of give him sort of a sinister feel, make him look like he was somebody with a job. Uh, musically, I decided to go with the Insect Records Collective to, to uh, score the film because it seemed like they'd be able to really give a good placement for where I wanted things to be in terms of mood. Uh, that first song being a Butcher Bear song, Velvet Coffin. And as we move into a quieter element of the film, I went with And Again by Kinder. So uh, at this point, we're not really sure if Troy plays a thief or what his objective is in this home, but he certainly seems kind of familiar in it. Uh, the location is the Wildflower Country Inn and Event Center. It's a place where I used to do wedding DJ and special events, and this is the location where they house people, rent out the home for different, you know, whatever people may need. It's a cool location out in the hill country. Definitely check it out if you're looking for a place to retreat <laughs> or a place to throw a wedding. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I really wanted the film to sort of sit in the quietness of the moment, you know. Really just let everybody sort of like let their own anticipation swell of what may or may not be happening. Give a lot of uh, ambiguity to how big the home may be. And uh, for the lighting, I reached out to Jeffrey Garcia from Dream Atomic. Uh, he really helped me mix in the lighting that was sort of already there at the location with a little bit of our artificial lighting that we brought in. And with this being my first production, he sort of just helped me have somebody to bounce ideas off of. Um, I went with friends to play the roles in this film just because I sort of wrote the characters based on aspects of the people that I knew. So Troy's always had this very, just sort of large, not large demeanor, but you know, he owns the space that he's in, you know. He's very confident with himself. Uh, when he does talk, he has a really nice booming voice that commands your attention. So uh, just that presence, presence is the word that I'm looking for. That presence that he had felt like it would be able to carry his character, especially one without dialogue. I didn't really want to trip anybody or myself up with dialogue. I wanted to make it more about the mood and the visuals. And then uh, the actress that appears later, Sarah, I uh, worked with her because she had sort of a classic look, something that would translate in film. And uh, we put her in sort of a traditional dress so that that would resonate a little bit better. Instantly sort of recognize her as the heroine, even though there aren't really any established roles throughout the film. <laughs> but ultimately, I wanted to make it as a sort of repossession in the literal sense, like Troy's a repo man. But the thing that he repossesses are souls. And for whatever reason, Sarah's character soul is due. So this was meant to be sort of a digital trap, the cell phone here. Uh, we moved into using a couple of the insect record songs more for score elements right now. Um, once the sound effect comes in, that's going to be lo-fi's band a loop. <laughs> and then when everything kicks into high gear, that's going to be bing-bong by multi-tracker. 
Um, yeah, real subtle effect we threw in there, but we had the cell phone start to kick off a red, 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 green pattern. Uh, I forget what the TV show is, but the TV show with Lin- Olivia Dunham, they use that as a mechanism to show somebody's been locked into a hypnotism. So I wanted to give that as a little bit of an ode. If you look real hard, you can see me in the mirror back there. <laughs> and uh, this is probably my favorite visual effect in the whole thing. The RBG soul collection scene. I uh, went with a whole bunch of pictures from Sarah's Facebook. Had them all center right into the middle of the eyes, except for the one sequence where it centers <laughs> right into Roger Rabbit. <laughs> so uh, the slick viewers, you might catch the Roger Rabbit reference in there. One of my favorite films of all time. Uh, the location opens and closes at Buzz Mill San Marcos, which is unfortunately no longer there. But for as enclosed as we wanted the middle section to be, I decided I wanted a place that was sort of open and inviting to uh, open and close the film so that Troy isn't necessarily played as some sort of grim reaper. You know, he's more of a man with a job, or maybe he's more than a man, but I didn't want to, I wanted to blur the line between heroes, villains, etc., protagonists, antagonists. These are more just people occupying the space. So, uh, yeah, thanks to Troy and Sarah for taking part in the film. Definitely thanks to Jeffrey Garcia for helping me with making it. Big ups to the whole Insect Records roster, Butcher Bear, Kinder, Lo-Fi, Multitracker, Sound Founder for this current song, Lights Out. And then we wrapped it up with A Better Tomorrow's Espionage, because espionage seemed like a fitting way to close out the film. Uh, thank you to Wildflower Country Inn and Event Center and Buzz Mill for allowing us to use the locations. And I'll let Troy tell you a little bit about his experience as we wrap this up. So when Craig approached me about doing repossession, I was actually pretty hesitant at first because I have zero acting experience, but it was reassuring to know that it wasn't a speaking role, so I was able to just put those fears aside, to some extent, I guess, and move forward with the role. I had a good time. It was a lot of fun uh, kind of seeing what goes on, at least with the, the videographer side of the filmmaking process, because I wasn't there for the editing process at all. I'm not really sure how much more acting I'm looking to do personally, but I am thankful that if I do choose to go forward and do more acting, whether it be voice acting or acting in shorts or anything like that, um, I'm thankful to Greg for having me in my possession. And I'm actually really proud of the short film. Like, did a great job. Thank you once again. Doomsday device.